Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up Gaming. Thank you so much to the 3,000 people that have joined the channel this month alone. And to our Patreon Saints. I believe we might have 10 of those now. If you want to become a patron then just hit the link below and you can join us. You don't even have to donate anything. So Omen Sight is not the game that I thought it would be when I first saw it on the eShop. What I knew though was that I needed to try this one out and I'm glad I did. I'm not going to lie, I love visually impressive games. So when I saw this was an Unreal Engine 4 title, my interest was piqued. What's more exciting about Omen Sight is that it takes a very interesting time travelling mechanic, a la Groundhog Day, and weaves a solid detective mystery throughout its 10 or so hours. With time travel comes repetition though, which let's be honest could be a disaster. Let's find out. You're dropped into a world in conflict, chaos and death. Fire rains from the skies and the world is turning to ash. A war rages all around you and the various animal kingdoms are in bloody conflict. It is the end of days, the apocalypse. Something's going to bring about the destruction of everything and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Story is told through several different characters and focuses on the mystery surrounding why the world has come to an end. I mentioned a time travelling mechanic and you're essentially a time jumping Sherlock Holmes with a tenacious knack for finding the truth through conversations with various players and lots of this. You're often given a choice between combat and using your ability to share memories with those you encounter. While the choice essentially comes down to two paths and both will be necessary to reach the end game, it is a nice addition and serves to give each new discovery meaning as you choose how and when you will use it through the timelines. The best moments of the story are that you will suspect almost all of the characters and when you find out the true path, you'll feel like it was your efforts that led you there. I love that you got to go on an adventure with both the heroes and the supposed villains and that the roles gradually change and become more grey as the story progresses. The best piece of storytelling is actually your own, the Harbinger. He's instantly recognisable to any of the other characters in the world who will often speak of you in hushed tones and the general reaction makes you feel incredibly important. But sir, that glow, that sword, is it the Harbinger? The story of Omen Sight becomes an incredibly dense tangle of different threads that you have to pull all together into one coherent package and the game does a really good job of keeping that consistent. Story scores 18 out of 20. The majority of the game is played in the form of a hack and slash with very similar mechanics to the Batman Arkham series which I loved. Combat is fast and fluid with a visceral feel to it. You can perform both light and heavy attacks with X and Y and combining these in various ways will create combos and chains. When an exclamation appears over an enemy's head, you can evade using the A button which provides temporary invulnerability and allows you a moment's peace to choose a new target or counter the last. Sometimes enemies will block your attacks but hammering down a slower more powerful one will strike or stagger them, allowing you a moment to wail freely on the defenceless fall. Enemies will scream at the sight of you and may even outright surrender. Throughout the levels you will find a vast wealth of loot. Hidden walls sometimes hide a stash of chests. To bolster this, an alternate routes become available as you gain certain skills. This alone means that repeating the same areas never feels fruitless as the cash you find is a key ingredient in the upgrading of your character. Level design is initially quite linear as you choose one of the three starter characters to visit, Ghost of Christmas Future style. You join them on their adventure and see how the day plays out. You can often affect the outcome of each particular day but not to a really deep level until later in the game. It's usually just choosing between an important combat sequence or showing someone a clue you've discovered in the form of a memory you transfer to them. If a key character is discovered and die, you may be able to bind to their soul and later join them at the beginning of the day, unlocking a few extra paths as the story progresses. This will give a new perspective on events and it was really interesting to be fighting one side of a battle Terrible challenge, sir. Surround them. only for the world to end and you choose to start the day over from the other side fighting for them. Character progression is excellently handled. 
From the hub area, you can spend your hard-earned cash. Do you like that Switch watch? To upgrade both your character, giving you a range of new abilities each time you level. Or your individual skills for use in combat. Now combat skills are where the game excels beyond the standard systems of many games. With certain partners, you can trigger their special moves such as this smackdown which will then slowly recharge with a cooldown timer. You might put some points into this ability and slow the speed of time, allowing you a dance of death weaving through your hapless foe. Or maybe throwing enemies around is your thing. Now, the beauty of many of these moves are they work in tandem with your current partner, and if you throw an enemy towards them, they will grab them and kill them instantly. It creates a really nice flow in the combat. Leveling is swift and makes a tangible difference to gameplay, so as to negate the inevitable backtracking that you have to do. Each race has their own gates, which you cannot pass through until you've learned that skill. To learn it, you must be present when they open one. You'll notice that these gates appear in many areas as you play the game, and again, when you learn that symbol, it creates a real desire to go back to a past memory to see where that leads. Often, it will lead to a totally different fork in time and story, with events playing out differently. Moments like this, where you can see a battle you were part of in the previous memory on a bridge behind you are excellent and really create a feeling that you're meddling with time itself. Boss fights can be surprisingly tough and an enemy one hour might be an ally the next. Generally, if you die, you don't go too far back, with little in the way of punishment and that's just fine with me as the combat can be particularly tricky at times. There are a variety of different enemy types to fight, but let's be honest, that variety isn't really huge and you may be fighting a clone army of rats that all look very similar. Although there are the occasional different ones like these weird squid looking things, or perhaps these larger brutes which pack one heck of a punch. I enjoyed the gameplay, it was very unique having the time travel mechanic and the levelling is a real treat. Repetition is undeniably going to happen just due to the nature of gradually solving the mystery by repeating certain days, but most of these were different in some way even when visited with the same character, so it never feels fruitless. Although there are some light platforming elements and a few pieces of destructible scenery, the platforming is just average but mixes up proceedings. It's the story that really makes the gameplay here, and the combat and everything else is just a nice extra to have along. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20, and the controls are excellent and score 17 out of 20. Visuals are a real mixed bag. They can look fantastic, particularly in docked mode, where the resolution is bumped up and the textures look crisper. In handheld, it looks like a dog's dinner, really. Textures are blurry and the overall aesthetic is just too low res to be nearly as enjoyable as when docked. At its best then, the game has some beautiful visual effects. The reflective maps in the hub area are nice and the general aesthetic is good. It's a mixture between realism and cartoon in the same way that Zelda does, but with a more serious and somber colour palette. Performance in an action game is essential and for the most part it's very good. Now, I know there is a patch on the way to further improve this, but it seems just fine currently bar the odd slowdown usually in some cutscenes, which was a little odd, but when in combat there are no issues. Audio is very strong, with one of my favourite elements being the chatter of the enemy. They might scream to their comrades that the Harbinger has arrived, and this serves to make you feel like a badass. The musical score is suitably epic, and there are a few nice moments that stand out as excellent. Visuals and audio combined score 14 out of 20. The game currently retails at £15.09, pence, €16.79 or $19.99. It's a decent length, anywhere between 7 hours at a leisurely pace for an average player to 15 hours for completionists. It offers a great story of overlapping and interweaving fates and the combat is good. 
I really enjoyed this game to the point where I missed another review because I was just playing this for fun, which Glenn will tell you just doesn't happen for us much these days. For a 3D action hack and slash with RPG elements and using the beautiful Unreal Engine 4, this seems a really good price to me. They need to patch out the handheld mode though, it's giving me Doom vibes for the blurriness. Still, performance is solid. Value scores 15 out of 20. Now after a huge flood of detritus on the eShop, I'm liking the kind of games that are starting to show up again on Switch. I don't mind ports when they're of games that are actually fun and offer a combat I enjoyed and a story-driven approach I've not experienced. It receives a Switch Up score of 80%. At this price, I think it'll make a great little stocking filler for yourself. Uh, metaphorically speaking of course, because uh, it's only digital, isn't it? Oh well. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the review, please hit the like button and leave a comment. And for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya!